Good morning. Today's video is brought to you by Insomnia. Uh, that's not a product. That's just, I woke up at 3 a.m. today and I woke up to see some really cool news. So if you've been following the open AI drama, here is a 30 second recap. Sam Altman was fired by the board last week and he is now looking like coming back with most of the board being fired because of potential malfeasance or malpractice or whatever. Long story short is something happened at OpenAI that catalyzed the board to eject Sam. Now they have said that it has nothing to do with safety, but there was a lot of speculation that there was some kind of breakthrough at OpenAI that made them feel like they were closer to AGI and that this uh, kind of precipitated into some escalation. So the latest news that has been updated as of this morning uh, 4.52 a.m., so this is just an hour ago right now, OpenAI researchers warned Board of AI breakthrough ahead of the ouster. So uh, the, the, the long story short is that, this, the, is that some of the research staff at OpenAI sent a letter to the board talking about a QSTAR algorithm. So we don't really know what QSTAR is yet, and we'll, we'll start to unpack that. But the, the letter apparently, according to the leak, said that this, um, that this is an algorithmic breakthrough that could quote-unquote threaten humanity. So this uh, really spooked them. And the, the assertion of the board is that, was that Sam had not been uh, regularly candid with the board. And so maybe they were afraid that Sam had been hiding something that was going on in the research. But that doesn't really make sense because Ilya Sutskever is the chief scientist. So whatever was going on with QSTAR, he should have known. Anyways, the board has lost a lot of credibility because of all this. So moving on, what is QSTAR? So the internet, as the internet does, has been doing a lot of research. And so people are talking about what is OpenAI's uh, QSTAR about. It sounds like it's related to Q-learning, which I'll tell you a little bit about what Q-learning is in just a second. I'll also tell you about ASTAR, the ASTAR algorithm. So the current speculation is maybe this is a hybridization of two algorithms a star, which is a navigation or search algorithm, and Q learning, which is an agent environment reinforcement learning schema. So that's the best guess right now. Um, but the other thing that's a little bit confusing is that allegedly this Q star algorithm was used to solve math problems, but rather than the benchmark uh, that that things like GPT have been getting, where they get you know seventy percent or eighty percent or even you know ninety percent uh, correct. Allegedly, this QSTAR algorithm allowed the model to get 100% accuracy on math tests. Now, while that doesn't sound like anything special, because, of course, like computers are natively good at math. <laughs> That's why computers were invented. So it's like prima facie, it's like that doesn't sound that impressive. But as you start to explore these algorithms, and I'll talk to you about these algorithms from a neuroscience perspective as well. Now, I will be the first to say I'm not an expert in neuroscience, but I have read a few books on neuroscience, um, and I've written a few books on cognitive architecture, so I'll unpack what I think the QSTAR algorithm is, as well as why I think this is, um, why, why the OpenAI research scientists might have been correct in saying, like, I'm not going to go to the hyper hyperbolic saying, like, this is an immediate threat to humanity. But it does seem like it could be a really interesting breakthrough. So let's see. You know, a lot of people are speculating that it has to do with tree of thought. So basically, if you think of, well, here, I'll, I'll show you in a, in a second. Tree of thought, Monte Carlo tree search, you know, so on and so forth. Um, really interesting uh, uh, ideas. So this is a good graphic that kind of gives you the break, the, 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 begin, the beginning understanding of what this search algorithm might be. So you have your current state, which is, you know, uh, coordinate zero, zero. Um, and then you have the goal state. Now in navigation in a graph, you're trying to get from, you know, your starting point to the end point. Um, and that is about moving through physical space or traversing nodes in a graph, which like, okay, if you've ever played a video game, that's how NPCs navigate. That that particular technology is nothing new. I think ASTAR was created in like the 60s or 70s. I mean, it is an old algorithm. Um, and we'll talk more about what ASTAR is in just a moment. Um, but when you take, okay, let's look at the current state and then the goal state, but let's abstract that instead of positions on a grid. What if the current state is the agent state in terms of, or even the world state? 
And then the goal state is where you want how you want the agent to behave or the objective of the agent or the, the desired world state that you want it to end up in. So this is the essence of goal tracking. Um, and this is the heart of cognitive control and executive function, which is which is what makes humans really powerful. And so what I mean by that is imagine that you want to get from the west coast of America to Hawaii. That is a big problem. So the 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 original state is you're standing on a beach in California and you want to be standing on a beach in Hawaii. There's a, any number of steps that you can do to get there. Now, I don't mean just navigating on a map. What I mean is the actual planning, the executive function to get from point A to point B, including all the problems you need to solve along the way. Now, as we've seen with, with language models, you can ask them to brainstorm stuff. That's what tree of thought is. You say, hey, Here's the current state. Here's the here's the problem that we want to solve. Brainstorm, a, you know, the current the first step. Brainstorm a list of steps, so on and so forth. And what you do is you you can through prompting strategies iteratively go through that. So that's like tree of thought, chain of thought. I've you know many of us have been experimenting with this for a while. So let's break down what A star what what Q learning is and A star, and then I'll show you some diagrams, some some illustrations, and we'll use. Uh, those as visual aids to understand what Q star might actually be and why it's super important for um, agentic behavior. So uh, I asked ChatGPT because it can explain things better than I can. Q learning is a type of reinforcement learning uh, algorithm used in machine learning. It is designed to help agents learn how to choose optimal actions in different states and in an environment to maximize some notion of cumulative reward. So agent and environment. In Q learning, you have an agent interacting with an environment. The agent makes decisions, and the environment responds to those decisions by presenting a new state and a reward. So this is this is fundamentally what, um, what goal pursuit is in humans, where we actually have dedicated neural structures that keep track of where we're at right now and where we're trying to get. And uh, and you know heuristics and and proximal uh, signals that we're paying attention to in our brains, some conscious, some unconscious, that track how close or far you are from your goal. And so this is why I have t in the past talked about frustration as a really important signal to use both in humans but also in machines. And so frustration means when your progress towards your goal is getting thwarted. So literally, like anger or frustration is an emotion that is the, the affect, the subjective experience of not getting closer to your goal. And so in that case, that would be, in, in, in machine terms, that would be a negative reward or at least a zero reward. Um, and an example would be, imagine when you're stuck in traffic. You're, dr you're driving from home to work and you expect it. So part of, part of the plan, part of the mental roadmap that you have is it should take 20 minutes to get to work. It should take 40 minutes to get to work. But then new information is presented from the environment, a whole bunch of brake lights, and you come to a dead stop. So now suddenly your, your pursuit of that goal of getting to work, um, the information has been updated and you've been given a negative reward, which is you're no longer moving towards it. And in fact, like maybe it's going to take hours to get to work depending on how bad the traffic jam is. And so that is, that is the purpose of frustration. And um, I and a bunch of other people have experimented with putting this into the, the prompting strategies. Um, so for instance, a bunch of members of um, the ACE framework team, the Agent Forge team, and a few others have experimented with this, which is detecting errors and then you know using that to backtrack to say, okay, that strategy didn't work. Let's do another one. So that's kind of merging the idea of cue learning with how humans actually uh, pursue goals. And if you want to learn more about this, um, the best book is uh, to read is On Task by David Bader. Um, so I read that book as part of my research and learning to create cognitive architectures. But if this, if if OpenAI has cracked QSTAR and a QSTAR is if this is what QSTAR is, then it's entirely possible that they've built they've baked this ability into the model so that you don't need uh, necessarily a, a prompting strategy, uh, which would be really interesting. So states and actions, I kind of already talked about that. Q value, the quality. The, so Q values are estimates of how um, good it is to take a certain action from a particular state. So this is what I mean by like heuristics or learning because humans rely on our experience to estimate what is the optimal action from here. 
um, in order to get closer to our goal. So for instance, in, in the traffic jam analogy, your past experience, depending on how much you know about that environment, you might say, oh, there's an exit that I can take up ahead so I can go around this. Or you might also have learned like, hey, let me fire up my, my Android or my Apple and ask you know, uh, the Maps app for uh, an alternative route. So you have different strategies. Or you might just say, you know what, I know, I know that the traffic is often bad right here, so I'm just going to wait it out. So that, that is understanding and, uh, and using heuristics in, in, uh, in, in order to approximate or guess at what the best optimal action is. And again, you can easily go into you know, GPT right now and just ask it to brainstorm a list of possible actions and ask it to ask or ask it to um, assess how to measure what those, what those uh, best actions will be. So humans do Q-learning. Q-learning is a mathematical representation of what humans do in order to pursue certain goals or objectives. Uh, now, you know, the other example that I was giving, like, how do you get from the beach of California to the beach of Hawaii? Um, you, you might say, okay, well, the easiest way is to either hop on a, on a boat or hop on a plane. But imagine that planes and boats don't exist, so then you need to build a boat, and there's a whole bunch of other steps. I actually talked about all this in Symphony of Thought. Um, so Symphony of Thought is another book that I wrote where I basically talked about all of these things as prompting strategies. So, you know, pr- goal, goal tracking, goal pursuit, uh, brainstorming, contingencies, all of that sort of thing. So this is something that I'm actually intimately familiar with in terms of what the models are capable of um, at, at the baseline. But if QSTAR is what we think it is, then they've actually integrated that ability directly into the models. So then I asked, what is uh, A-STAR? And uh, A-STAR is actually here. Let me just show you because A-STAR makes a little bit more sense if I show you. Um, so this is an example of a visual representation of A-STAR. So... It's not necessarily immediately obvious what's happening here, but the problem of navigating from point A to point B is, uh, from a mathematical perspective, a uh, it's a non-trivial problem. It has been solved, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily obvious. So this first one is what's called a a, a breadth first search, in which case what it's doing is it's 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 tracking every possible option. As it's going, and so what you'll do is, if the if the goal state is very far from the original state, you're going to end up trying every single path or every single node before getting to the final goal. Whereas this one on the right is what's called a depth first search. But the problem with many depth first search uh, algorithms is that if you go really deep in the wrong direction, imagine you're going down a cave and you go to the very bottom of the cave, but it was the wrong direction. Um, and so A star tries to solve both of these by learning how to get closer to your goal as you're going. And again, human brains basically do this when you're navigating across a city that you're familiar enough with. You're like, okay, I know basically where I'm going. So let me, you know, you can kind of guess at which turn will get you closer. And again, this is kind of a, a hybridization of Q learning and A star. Human brains do this, but but you can also think of it in terms of not just navigating in physical space but navigating towards a more complex goal, such as I want to get from you know California to Hawaii, but there's no boats and no planes, so I either need to uh, swim or build a boat or build a plane, and then that un- you know that uh, results in a whole bunch of other decisions that flow downstream from that. So here's another example of an A star one, which is like uh, the the rail networks. Um, so you can see it's kind of slowly growing and expanding. I don't know where the where this one is going. But you can see where it's it's like exploring new paths, and then once a new path opens up, it kind of goes in that way a little bit. Um, this is also really similar, actually, to like ants exploring for food. Um, so, like the A star algorithm, you can argue like emerges in nature quite a, quite uh, often. So this this graphic is probably the best one, I think, um, for what I what I think of when I think of representing um, what Q star probably is. So imagine that each of these nodes, rather than being a node in physical space, imagine that each of these nodes is a tree in your tree of thought prompting strategy. So what happens is you can have something that thinks through every possibility until the environment gives you a negative result. So basically, you know, you can say, okay, let's let's think of it of the getting from California to Hawaii example. You say, okay, 
I'm going to build a boat, so that means that I need wood and, or metal. I need to plan the boat. I need to do X, Y, and Z. And then as you come up with this plan, you think through it. You think through contingencies. And then it comes time to build the boat, and there's no wood and no metal. So then it's like, okay, cool. So you imagine that, 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 the, that the lack of finding something is the, is the barrier, the negative reward that you get from the environment. So it's like, okay, there's no wood, there's no metal. So that means we need to find another way around this problem. So if you, if you view um, planning, like obstacles in planning, if you analogize those to physical barriers, then what you need to do is you need to explore the problem space around it and find a way to navigate around that problem. And so in this case, the algorithm um, you know, says, okay, well, maybe the lack of wood was the bigger problem, and then, but this other, other branch of the problem space is the lack of metal. And so uh, that problem was easier to overcome. Maybe there was no raw metal, but there was a landfill nearby or a recycling center. And so even though there was no immediately accessible metal, part of the problem was, oh, well, we, we, there's no, there no metal store, so, but we can go find some metal or we can go recycle some metal. And now we can continue building our boat, but the process has changed because instead of just building the boat and going straight to California, now you have to take a detour where it's like, okay, well, first we need to find some metal, refine some metal, and then build the boat out of metal, and then we get to our destination. I think that this is what QSTAR is. Um, wild speculation on my point, take all of this with a gigantic grain of salt, but having been working in this space for a while, both looking at it from a cognitive neuroscience perspective and a prompting strategy perspective, I'm wondering if the QSTAR algorithm is something about how to find this optimal, optimal path to a solution. Now, you might say, okay, well, why, why is testing it on a few math problems and just getting 100% on math problems, why is that an indication of this? Well, the reason is because many math problems, when you're solving or balancing an equation, are very similar. And so like imagine, you know, go back to maybe a little more sophisticated than multiplication tables. Go back to go back to algebra, which you probably started learning in 5th, 6th or 7th grade, um depending on, you know, your your uh, school district or whatever. So when you're when you're starting to solve these problems and you are looking at the problem, you have to figure out which strategy to use next. And so, you know, many of us were taught, uh, you know, what I was taught was, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which is uh, parentheses, exponents, uh, please excuse uh, my uh, M is multiplication. Anyways, you get the idea. And most school districts have different uh, mnemonic devices. But so that is a set of strategies, an order of operations to solve a math problem, which, of course, large language models have that. I can go back over to chat GPT and say, what is... Please excuse my dear aunt uh, Sally. And I know that I just spelled that ant as in like six legged things. Um, so it's a mnemonic device to remember the order of operations, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, it understands what, what that is. Um, and so then you imagine that please excuse my dear aunt Sally is part of the heuristics that it, it knows and that it learns in terms of trying to solve a math problem. So imagine that that in this case, rather than you know California down here and Hawaii over here and having to build a boat, imagine that you have an unbalanced math equation down here and the ultimate result is like A equals zero. That's what you're looking to achieve. And so then these prompting steps are, because um, you know many people have observed that, that these language models are often really bad at math, even though they understand what numbers are and they, they understand math and formulas and all that other stuff. So this could represent an internal search algorithm that says, okay, in order to accurately solve this problem, these are the internal steps that I need to do in order to get there. These are the, ser the series of steps and strategies um, that I need to employ in order to get there. And then, of course, if you run into a barrier, then how do you think around that barrier? So, yeah, there you have it. That's kind of what I think uh, QSTAR is after reading about it and sleeping on it and waking up entirely too early. Honestly, that's probably why I woke up too early is because if I'm, if my brain is chewing on a problem, I, I frequently wake up early. Anyways, that's TMI about me. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to be seeing some family and eating lots of food and then having hopefully a great food coma. I wish the same for all of you. Uh, later. Cheers.